everybody yet another video this will be part five in the series I've continued to collect Caldecott winners uh, I was going on to the 70s after I mostly finished the 80s uh, but it turns out that the 70s are incredibly difficult to get copies that fulfill my list of things I'm looking for so rather than come up completely empty for months at a time uh, I decided to move on to the 90s and probably on from there newer from there and then just once I get all that done pick up the 1985 winner then I'll be able to fully concentrate on everything in the past and it'll be much more slow going um, I might start doing some new berries instead of just being completely screwed. But I've picked up four from the 90s since the last video. You can see I've kind of got them starting to be in order here. We've got Oxcartman 80, F Fables 81. I've got uh, Jumanji down there. Did get it signed finally. Um, I showed it last time. 83 Shadow, 84 Glorious Flay, 85 Still Waiting, 86 Polar Express, 87 Hey Al, 88 Al Moon, 89 Song and Dance Man. And that brings us to uh, the 1990 winner to start off the decade, Ed Young's Lan Po Po. Uh, really striking cover. Uh, it's a take on Red Riding Hood. Um, but uh, it takes place in China, and uh, it's very beautiful, beautifully illustrated. Kind of a strange panel design on some pages, most pages. Uh, it's really interesting. Fourteen ninety five, not price clipped. This is kind of a, uh, a strange board here. It's not a cloth binding really, and. Um, it's by Philomel Books, who also did a uh, published Al Moon from 88. And this is signed by Ed Young a couple years after publication. This book was actually uh, released in 1989. Um, one in 1990. Um, now, one thing I feel like I kind of scored on is this next one, uh, David... Weisner, uh, his 1992 winner, Tuesday. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of David Weisner, to, I've got to say. Um, especially uh, Fletsum, which is another winner of his, I found to be uh, a little, it's a little just kind of bland comic booky. y um, graphic novel in terms of a, a an artist. I'm not super str uh, struck by his work, but um, it's really amazing. I mean, I do like it. Don't get me wrong. I do like it. Um, but you cannot deny that he has been a huge Caldecott favorite. Um, he's won three times, in fact. Um, one of only two artists to win it three times, the medal, along with Marsha Brown. And he's actually gotten several honors on top of that. So you're talking about someone who's really dominated um, the last couple decades. Uh, also not price clipped. Um, this is a reinforced uh, quarter cloth binding uh, signed in his, what seems to be his usual way. Um, Looks like it's the original, not nah, not the maybe not the original book tour, but the uh, well, no, I guess it is the original book tour, probably most likely, because it's in '91, um, and that's when it came out. So um, got a really good deal on this one. Um, it looks like there's some rubbing here, but really it's all on the it's all on the dust jacket protector. So that's what I like to see. No actual issues with the book. Or the jacket. Uh, a little bit further, 
down the path is the 1996 winner, Officer Buckle and Gloria, Peggy Rathman, also illustrated boards. Um, this is kind of more up my alley. Um, really interesting, some th interesting things with perspective here. You can even tell just from the cover, it's, it's a very interestingly drawn book. Um, there's illustrated end papers, which is always, always kind of fun. It's a little more childish. Um, but uh, I enjoy it. Fun story um, for kids. Um, this is the 1996 winner. The boards are illustrated actually, not just the end papers. Um, 1595 again. Really, the prices went up hugely uh, through the 80s and 90s for, compared to what you could get up. Um, a book like this for before. Um, don't know exactly why that is. Maybe somebody can respond with that. First impression. And uh, one thing really cool about this copy is that it was um, signed and inscribed with an actual drawing that's so cool it actually almost looks like it's on the page itself. Nicely done. Um, a really beautiful inscription, not dated, and kind of the might must be the person that it's to. Um, she obviously didn't do this signing in a crowded sort of situation where she was trying to get the most signings done. This is a really personal inscription. It looks like that she actually spent some time on the drawing. Um, uh, also in beautiful, beautiful shape. And last but not least, in the 90s, I picked up um, Paul Zielinski's uh, Rapunzel. Uh, Paul Zielinski, a very famous um, illustrator. He illustrated a lot of uh, novels as well, novel covers, not just picture books. Um, he's, he's done some for Beverly Cleary and, and others. Um, working in kind of a painterly old master sort of style um, Rapunzel obviously a famous tale really just you know classically beautiful um, illustrations here um, kind of throwback this is a $17 price on the jacket as you know I hate anything price clipped so I always get non price clipped copies when possible signed in his Really nice signature there. Um, so those are four new ones. Now, these were amazing deals. Um, I actually found a new buyer, seller rather, bookseller, who uh, isn't in the business of kind of screwing with collectors and trying to charge them outrageous prices. So, the Lon Popo, Officer Buckle and Gloria, and Tuesday were all within the 150 to 200 range. Tuesday, uh, I spoke about it being a really good deal. Tuesday is a very famous illustrated book from the last few decades, and it's very sought after. I have seen copies of it in this condition signed for about $1,400, so we're talking one-seventh of the price of what some sellers are asking. Um, I was able to get it from a really reasonable, reasonable seller. And um, Rapunzel was literally uh, only about 65 or $70. Um, it seems to be a very cheap one in the annals of Caldecott's. I don't know why exactly that is. Um, he was a very well-known illustrator. It may have sold a lot. It may just not be very desired. Um, but either way, I've spent very little on these. Um, if you add all of these up, in fact, it's less than what I've spent on some 80s copies. So significantly less. So um, that's it for now. Um, the 90s and, and later are going to be much, much easier to finish. 
I have a few more coming, so probably with the next four or five, um, I'll do another update then. And then uh, hopefully those will be a little less interesting, I suppose, for anyone that's collecting. Um, and then I'll be going back and hoping for the 70s. I have one 70s um, thing that I'm kind of eyeing, and um, it may only be for the book itself because the jacket's not great, um, which is an inscribed copy of Funny Little Woman, um, illustrated by Blair Lent, which is, I believe, the 1973 winner. So we'll see how that goes when I get that. Um, I have a couple others in mind. And I'll do an update then. Hope you like these.